Hi, welcome everybody to the virtual college exploration for all students sponsored by the College to Career Fairs and Strives Camp. Thank you for joining us. A few announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Uh, your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, this is just one of the many different sessions happening at the College to Career Fairs Connect. Um, so if you want to go ahead after the session and sign up for any other ones, you go ahead. And then this present presentation is recorded, so anything, um, any of the presentations you go to will be available in about a week at the same website. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kelly. Good evening. My name is Kelly Gualtieri. I'm the Director of Admissions and, and Enrollment Management at Maine Maritime Academy. Um, we are not one of the five Federal Service Academies, um, but I actually have the benefit of being, um, have gone to the Naval Academy. I actually worked at West Point. And prior to my coming to Maine Maritime, I worked 10 years at the Merchant Marine Academy. Um, so I did everything from as a midshipman at the Naval Academy to um, a coach at West Point um, to an admissions officer and the director of admissions down at Kings Point. And now I am here um, at Maine. So I am gonna talk to you a little bit about everything. Um, I have an overview first of the military academies. I realize that that is why you are here. Um, we are usually a backup and I don't mean that in any disrespectful way to some of my students. Um, but not everyone can get into a military academy um, and it is very, very selective. So we are happy to talk to those students um, who want a path to service. Um, so I will go over the five federal service academies. Um, I will talk about ROTC because that is a great opportunity to also have a commission and serve after graduating from a four year college. Um, I will talk to you a little bit about Maine Maritime Academy. It's kind of interspersed throughout the presentation. Um, I'll talk to you about what makes us different, what's similar, what you can do here, and how you can commission afterwards in all the branches. I will go over a little bit more about our application process, um, but I will also talk to you about the application process for the service academies. Um, and then I'm gonna touch upon the medical, physical, and nomination process. Um, and so most of that is just for the, for the service academies, um, but it is a very important um, step. So just to kind of go over, there are five federal service academies. They each incur an obligation after, after you graduate. So usually your first two years, um, you can leave. Um, it's once you sign your paperwork your junior year, which I know the Naval Academy just did, um, that you actually have your obligation. Your obligation will change upon what you choose to do in that branch of service. So sometimes um, jobs like flight, uh, if you want to be a pilot, that, that gives you a little bit more of an obligation. So we have West Point, which is located in New York. We have the Naval Academy that's located in Annapolis, Maryland. We have the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We have the Coast Guard Academy that's located in New London, Connecticut. And we have the Merchant Marine Academy, also known as Kings Point, and they're located as well in, in Long Island in New York. Um, traditionally, everyone who goes to West Point usually commissions into the Army. There are some opportunities to cross branch, um, but those are not your typical um, pathways. Um, those that go to the Naval Academy go to, into the Navy or the Marine Corps. Air Force goes into the Air Force and now the Space Force, which is what they're really talking about um, lately. Um, Coast Guard will serve in the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard Academy produces all the officers pretty much, um, except for some commissioning sources through OCS. Um, officer candidate school. The Coast Guard itself has a Homeland Security mission, so it is not in the Department of Defense like the other three. And then Kings Point is actually in the Department of Transportation. Um, and those students typically go into the maritime industry as reservists in the Navy, but you can actually branch, you can actually commission in any branch of the active duty services. So they will go into um, the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Coast Guard. So just a little bit about a, other opportunities. So it is very selective, as I mentioned, to get into the five federal service academies, but there are other opportunities as well. Um, so we like to touch, touch upon the Reserve Officer Training Course, otherwise known as ROTC. 
Some of you may have known about JROTC, the junior ROTC program in high school. Um, that is a great path um, for students looking for a little more structure. Um, but our ROTC program, um, either at Army, Navy, or Air Force, will actually commission as an officer. You, so you go to all different types of schools, you apply to the program, as well as to the schools that you're interested in attending. Most times you can put up to five schools. There are some unique differences in all of the application processes, but I did list the, the um, website access or websites there so you can get the specific information for the branch you're looking for. I always encourage students to apply to all of the academies as well as to any of the ROTC opportunities that you're looking to go into. Um, again, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. The more opportunities you have, um, the better your chances will be to commission or attend a commissioning program. Typically, when you're in the ROTC program, you will be in uniform once a week. Um, you will, tr you will um, participate in classes um, like a regular civilian student the rest of the time. You have some um, PT activities and some other um, unit activities, whether it's on the weekend or during the weeknights. Um, it really just depends on, on what branch of service as well as what school or what unit you're a part of. The other thing down at the bottom is strategic sea lift officers. And that's something that we have here as well. So we do have Navy ROTC. Um, just like the Naval Academy, if you do Navy ROTC, you can also go into the Marine Corps. So there is a Marine Corps option. <clears throat> Excuse me. But here, because of the maritime mission, we actually, like Kings Point, have a Naval Reserve option. And it's called the Strategic Sea Lift Officer Program. And so think about your Naval Aircraft Carrier Group. Um, they no longer pull into foreign ports. So what happens is, is a, a military sea lift command vessel or a support vessel will come with merchant mariners on it and it will actually come into the carrier group. They shoot lines over and they refuel underway. So it really helps support the mission of the Navy. It, they help bring um, Army and some of their tanks, machinery overseas as well. So it's important for us to be where the battles are, but we also have to get there. And so the Strategic Sea Lift Officer Program helps support the active duty branches, the Department of Defense branches. So as we segue then into Maine Maritime Academy, yes, we are academy, we are a state school. We were founded in 1941 during World War II, basically to help support the country in their mission um, in, in that time of war. Um, so we are one of seven maritime colleges in the United States. Um, we have six state schools. So there's us in Maine, there's SUNY Maritime in New York, right across the water from, from Kings Point. Um, there's Mass Maritime in Massachusetts, there's Texas Maritime, there's Great Lakes, and there's Cal Maritime. Um, so we are all state schools. We're slightly different, um, just like the academies, but we all offer maritime um, and marine related programs, as well as that strategic sea lift officer program. We also offer NROTC and Marine Corps option. Um, we have only a thousand students here, a little bit under a thousand students, so it is a very small school. Um, we are public, we are a public state school. Um, we do have both males and females on our campus. This year's class was actually 20% female. Our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1. You will know all of your classmates, you will know all of your professors as well. We have three degrees with 22 degree 23 degree programs, and we offer seven professional license opportunities. And I'm going to touch upon a little bit of, of those um, in a minute. The best part about our campus is our working waterfront. So we're located in Castine, Maine. It's about an hour south of Acadia. Um, it is in a beautiful area, and we have the best working waterfront of any school. Um, we have six, over 60 training, research, and pleasure vessels. 
everything from the state of Maine, which is that large oceanographic um, vessel behind us um, that is used now um, for our, our students in our unlimited license program. We have tug and barge. We have a, a vessel just for our ocean study students that does research drags um, on the seafloor. We have navigational vessels. We have the state of Maine um, tall ship, which is called Bowdoin, um, but it's a very hands-on type of atmosphere. Um, where students are learning what they're going to be doing the day they graduate. So the day they graduate, they go off just like the service academies into their job field. 90% of our graduates are employed within 90 days. Um, and that's something we like to really talk a lot about. Um, our, we prepare our students for the careers that they're going to have. One of the things about all of the service academies, including us, is our mission is very focused. Um, our students come here really focused on what they want to do, on that hands-on aspect. Um, and for us, it's really focused around marine and the marine-related programs. Um, more importantly, what we do is we provide our graduates with the skills, ethics, and knowledge needed to succeed in a global economy, right? So everything has to move all over the world, whether it's your iPhone or your Tesla vehicle, um, the food we eat. Think about everything we use, we wear, it has to go from where it's being made or grown and it has to get to where you use it as the consumer. So that's a lot of what we do from the engineering side to the driving the vessel and the shipping side to our business side to our ocean studies side that's actually making sure that currents and things like that are all working um, to get those products where they need in a timely fashion as well as the human impact on, on the um, shipping and the environment. So here's just a quick little video about Maine Maritime Academy. If you really want to get an opportunity to know your professors, experience what your industry is like, and also create lifelong friendships, MMA is a great choice. sometimes like five or six kids where you can go into your professor's office at all times and they know your name and you're not just a face. Every major has hands-on opportunities through their labs to reinforce what they're learning in lecture. places that you come and meet friends for life. To me, the school's built off its reputation and its alumni. They're a great resource to use and to have, and having that open is just awesome. More than 90% are employed within a few months, I think speaks volumes to uh, the, the quality and the demand of what we're doing here. At Maine Maritime Academy, the academic environment is one of rigor, one of accomplishment, and one of steadfast knowledge. place where you find out where, where you want to be and who you are. I've grown a lot since I came here as a freshman. I'm still growing. So just a little bit about our majors here. Um, all of the service academies are STEM focused. You do have the opportunity at the five federal service academies, um, or at least the ones, the DOD ones, so 
Army, Navy, and Air Force to do some humanities. Um, but again, you will have a STEM degree. So there's that engineering core curriculum. For us here at Maine Maritime Academy, we have four areas, um, four academic departments, which is marine transportation, engineering, ocean studies, and international business and logistics. Those seven licenses that I was talking about are all there on the right-hand side. The unlimited licenses, the third mate and the third engineer, um, are what our students are well known for. And those are the license that allows them to sail on any US or foreign flag vessel, unlimited tonnage um, anywhere in the world. Um, and so we also have limited licenses. Um, and as you'll see in the next slide, these are some of the paths that you can chart. So in our engineering um, department, we have marine systems engineering, naval architecture, there is the license opportunity in there, or there's the four-year program, which is just the Naval Architecture degree without that Coast Guard license. We can't fit everything in in four years, and so that, that program is a five-year program. We have Marine Engineering Technology and Marine Engineering Operations. Those also culminate in not only a degree, but a third engineer's license. Um, and then we have our power program, both power engineering technology, power engineering operations. So think of all the things that you can do on a ship, but they're shore side. So um, those students are doing power plants, generators, um, infrastructure facility engineering. Um, they are also um, you know, working on now some of the wind turbines and things of that nature. We offer a stationary license for Maine in, that, um, in those programs that you can actually use anywhere. Um, so there's very few states across the country that have a stationary engineering license. Um, those students though can um, use those anywhere where they want to go. Our marine transportation made our department has a few different options as well. The unlimited license is marine transportation operations. So those, um, those majors that you see that are starred require the regiment of midshipmen. We do call ourselves midshipmen, just like the Naval Academy. Um, and I will talk to you a bit more about the regiment in the next slide. Um, but that is for those unlimited license, the marine transportation operations major. Vessel operations and technology is a smaller tonnage license. You can do everything up until a large tug. A lot of those students will go into tug and barge operations. They stay more near coastal, but they don't have to be. Um, and they're also doing things like tall ships. Um, so you will see them very hands-on. Also driving vessels, just as not the giant container ships or cargo vessels that you see in some of the larger ports and harbors. Small vessel operations is actually a 200 ton near coastal license. It is a two year degree, um, as well as small craft design and small craft systems. Those are both our, um, our other two associate degree programs. In ocean studies, you have marine bio, oceanography, and coastal and marine environmental science. The unique thing about those programs is you can also do a dual major with small vessel operations. So not only can you take water samples for oceanography or tag sea turtles with marine biology, but you can actually drive the vessels to the research. So when research money is tight, you are actually filling two roles in that research, both from a, a research standpoint, as well as driving the vessel or a backup ship driver or ship handler. Um, and the coastal and marine environmental science really looks at the human impact um, on that environment or where those two environments meet. International business and logistics, um, we have one program that's at the bachelor's degree. It is a bachelor's of science, but you can also do that with the 200 ton near coastal license with small vessel operations. And our students in that major are almost 100% job placement upon graduation. And that's because it's really supply chain management. Again, how does everything get from place to place? And that's what they do. They work for large companies, um, everything from um, L.L. Bean here in Maine to Pepsi or Coke. They go to Tesla, they go to Raytheon. Um, and so it's not just limited to maritime based companies. Um, they can do really the business and logistics anywhere. 
We also have two master's degree programs. Um, one is online, that international logistics and management program, and then the other one is actually hybrid. The master's degree is online, but it also provides you the 200 ton near coastal license as well. I mentioned the regimen of midshipmen. Just like all the federal service academies, there is a regimen. Um, for us, it is required for the unlimited Coast Guard license majors. Um, and for the federal service academies, you will find it is a structured school environment. Yes, you wear uniforms. Yes, your day is very structured. Um, but it is a great atmosphere to be in. And it does provide leadership opportunities as well as self-discipline. It always looks good on a resume, not that that's why you're doing it. It shows you how to work as a team um, and, and it shows a lot of strength of character and responsibility. Um, and that's one of the missions of, of really all of the, the regiments um, across all of the service academies. For us, as I mentioned, it is required for certain majors. 65% um, of our student body is in the regiment and those students who do not have to be in it sometimes are. So we call those voluntary regiment students and you cannot tell um, that they're voluntary. So they do everything the same as the, as the students who are required to be in it. It's all about leadership, um, but also having fun and tradition. So things like ring dances, homecoming, um, it's a lot of fun. And you meet lifelong friends and teammates that you will have um, throughout your career um, right next to you. So for us, it's really about where your path will take you. Um, our unlimited license program have cruise and cadet shipping embedded in it. So like all the federal service academies, your summers are not off. You are actually doing hands-on learning during those summer opportunities. For our regimental students um, in the unlimited license program, they're gonna be on a working classroom. When I was interested in coming to the school, uh, obviously they do the um, like ship tour, and that's when I knew like, this is what I wanted to do with uh, my college career. During that ship tour, I realized that this was a chance to do something, you know, on a really grand scale and work in an industry that's huge and, uh, all across the world. And it, it just appealed to me right then and there. And I'll never forget the first time I stepped on the ship and going up to the bridge. I was just. Uh, this is what I want to do. First day or two, there's some confusion, you know, what watch, where I go. Uh, and after the first couple of days, you could, you could actually tell the ship starts to come alive. Freshman cruise was pretty neat because that's, you know, the first time that I ever went to sea. And I experienced a lot of new things um, on that cruise, just be it, you know, going uh, overseas, being away from home, um, having a chance to actually uh, go to work. Well, the high point for students, I think, is once they get away from casting and actually get out on the ocean. Uh, that's where, you know, a lot of them is pretty grand. You know, they've never done that before. Especially fresh. If you have a good trip across, it's not too rough. That's just pretty, you know, you get a lot of the navigation done, and celestial and whatnot, and see your first foreign port if you've never been there. I guess sort of probably for the crews, the freshmen would be going to the foreign ports, you know, going out to sea for the first time. Seeing things like dolphins and whales jumping all over the place and you know, getting nice weather. And, you know, going from the gray green water of the Gulf of Maine into the Gulf Stream where it turned deep blue and they go blue. The high point for them is, okay, they, they've been to, may, maybe even been to some of these ports before. They're working on getting, getting things done, you know, getting their, whatever their classrooms work on ships, that, getting that out of the way. They're given a little more responsibility and, you know, assisting with the freshmen and, and guiding them, so to speak. Uh, they're held accountable for things more, too. Although it's a lot different than freshman cruise, uh, freshman cruise is really like, okay, I get my chance to travel and kind of, you know, do what I need to do and uh, learn as much as I can, but still have some fun. I'm really looking at this, uh, this upcoming cruise as a chance to work 
a chance to grow as a professional. I know personally that I need to improve um, my watch standing and um, just my overall, I guess, capacity as a mariner. And uh, I think being on the training ship gives you a controlled environment and uh, the time to really do that. So I am definitely looking forward to my junior cruise. I am super nervous, um, but I'm ready to work hard and do what needs to, do what needs to be done. So even for our students who are not on um, in the unlimited license program, they will have co-ops and internships. Again, it's, it's just like the Federal Service Academies in terms of giving you those opportunities to learn about the industry that you're gonna go into after you graduate. These are just some of the different companies that our students will internship with, will co-op with, and even will cadet ship that sophomore summer um, with working maritime companies um, you know, throughout their, their um, throughout the world. Where will your path take you for us? Well, there's a lot of different um, opportunities and it's not limited to the shipping industry. So there are some engineering and engineering technology, um, con industrial construction system design, plant operations, our science students, our ocean study students are doing everything from marine resources, environmental, um, you know, some of those are government agencies. Um, the business side is doing transportation, logistics, um, and some of the overlap is we will have students in both an active duty reserve or even a civilian um, working for the Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, Army, or Air Force. Um, we have some students that will go into NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. They also have a core, um, or you can just work for them as a researcher or a ship driver. And then there's Military Sea Lift Command, which I mentioned earlier. And they are the, the, the um, group that really helps support all of the different um, active duty branches. Um, so that is also another way our students will help or go active duty. So how do you chart your path outside of the classroom? So for us, we do we have athletics, division three sports, a little bit of everything. Um, I have a video for this one as well. Oh, sorry.
for us, you do not have to participate in athletics at West Point Naval Academy and Air Force Academy. There is an athletic component. So if you're not on a varsity team, usually you do comp compete in, in intramurals. Um, we also offer our students over 30 clubs and organizations. Um, so everything from a service fraternity to schooner crew, which um, is up in that top right hand picture. Um, they go out on our our tall ship Bowdoin. Um, Scuba Club is a really great club. Um, we have over eight different types of scuba classes here. Everything um, from getting your master dive certification to scientific diving. Um, our students love to combine those um, later on for things like underwater welding or in the research side, um, diving the coral reefs with their scientific diving certification. The Woodsman Club is another interesting one. They compete against other schools in the area with the lumberjack challenges and things like that. And they also do some community service in terms of getting the wood bank ready um, this time of year for those in the community that need it. Um, if we don't have your club, we will help you um, make it. So there's a lot to get involved with. So how to chart your path. So our applications are a little bit different, but we're all looking at the same thing. So the biggest thing is make sure that you have the four years of English and four years of math. For the service academies, they really wanna see you challenge yourself. They wanna see calculus. Um, they like AP courses and honors courses. Um, we have a little bit different standard. A lot of our students do challenge themselves with those courses, but it's not a requirement. Most of our students have at a minimum pre-calculus, but they do have the four years of math. For science, for us, it's only two of three. Most of our students have physics, but if you go to a little school, sometimes you don't have a physics class actually running. Um, so for us, we do desire physics, but it's not mandatory. For the Federal Service Academies, again, it's very selective, very competitive. You wanna, you wanna challenge yourself um, and you wanna do it both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. So for us, we are a common application school. Um, so it does make life a little bit easier. Um, we do need your high school transcript. Um, and we need a list of senior year courses. Sometimes when we get your transcript, um, the course, the classes that you're in senior year will not be on it. So make sure that you fill out the common application completely. For the Federal Service Academies, their applications are all online. Um, you will actually send, um, you will type in the information for your guidance counselor and your um, who, who the people who are providing you the letters of recommendation, and they have to do those through that application system. For us, we only require one letter of recommendation and it can come from anyone. We wanna know about you. So make sure they know who you are as a person and can talk about your leadership and your desire to be here. Um, we also suggest typing up a resume and adding that. Um, that is part of the Common App if you fill it out completely. And it will be asked on all the Federal Service Academies what you do. So for all the underclassmen watching this, start writing it down as a freshman, what you participate in, any leadership opportunities that you have or roles, um, things like Boy Scouts, Boy State, um, if you're an Eagle Scout, um, you know, if you're doing athletics, if you start a club, National Honor Society, all of those things show the leadership indicators that, that most of our students have. Um, we also suggest for us providing, you know, one or two extra letters of recommendation. Most of the Federal Service Academies are gonna require three. This year, we are test optional. The service academies are still making those announcements as to whether they can be test optional or not. They are federal service academies. They do have a different code of federal regulations that they have to follow. So do touch base with each of those um, academies that you're applying to, um, to discuss whether or not you have to send in SAT or ACT scores this year. For the nomination process, which I'll talk to you about in a minute, they too usually require SAT or ACT scores, so you would want to call them or look at their website to find out about that requirement. For us, we do have early action, which is non-binding, and we have regular decision, which is March 1st, much later than any of the Federal Service Academies or ROTC applications are due. The best thing is to get your applications done and do them early. 
okay? You wanna get as many chances to review or update your file as things go on. So the earlier you tell the academies you're interested, the more opportunities you'll have. Um, if they say that you need another class, um, or if you decide to take an AP, um, you know, for the second semester, things of that nature. So getting into the real confusing aspect for many students, um, this is not your traditional college in terms of going to a federal service academy. There are three unique um, application requirements that only the federal, federal academies um, require. The medical, which what they're talking about is the Dodmer Medical, the Department of Defense Medical Examination Review Board. You can go to dodmerb.tricare.osd.mil. Um, Larry Mullen does a great job of explaining the process and explaining about how it has to be you as the student who is driving this, this path. Um, he has a thing called questions on the process. It's right there on the left-hand toolbar. It will give you all you need to know about the Dodmer Medical. There are unique things called remedials where they need more information. There are waivers that sometimes are required um, and again, usually need more information. Um, but everyone is hoping to be medically qualified in terms of getting into the academy. So you could be a great academic student. You could get um, a letter of assurance or an offer of admissions, but you still need to then meet these other three requirements. So you need to be medically qualified. You need to have a nomination. So Coast Guard Academy is the only school, the only federal academy that does not require a nomination. Um, the big three, Army, Navy, and Air Force, you can apply for your state senator. You are eligible for both. You can apply for your congressional office, and you can apply for the vice president. Kings Point only takes nominations from your state senator and a congressional office. While they encourage you to go to your congressional office, you can actually get it from anyone in your state. Um, states um, in he here in Maine, we only have two congressional offices. Um, you know, so it is based upon your state. California has a lot of different offices there. You just need to type in your, your address, um, including your zip code, and you can find out who your congressional office or who your congressman or congresswoman is. The physical is a CFA, slightly different for the Coast Guard Academy, but um, for the other four, it includes push-ups, crunches, shuttle run, pull-up, mile run, and a kneeling basketball throw. There are some time limits in there in terms of um, well, distance for the shuttle run, but an, an amount for pull-ups. The mile run is, um, you know, how fast you can do it, but crunches and push-ups are within a timed amount, how, how many you can get. So again, you have to complete all three of those um, in order to then also get a, a, an appointment to the Federal Service Academies. For us, only if you're doing the um, Navy ROTC or the Marine Corps option, is there a Dodmer Medical involved? Um, so for any of your ROTC options um, that will be later in that process for the Federal Service Academies, it happens right away. Again, you wanna do everything as soon as possible. Sometimes these things will take a little bit longer than you think. So we all have regional rankings, national rankings. We are all really great educational opportunities. And you can see US News and World Report just sent out their newest rankings. Um, Money Magazine also just provided theirs. We were actually listed as number two in the most transformative college. Um, we were number one for best college for veterans, um, best value, top public schools. We also have some like hidden gems um, in the Northeast, um, as well as some um, College of Distinction awards, whether it's the engineering or the business program. All of us are really great opportunities. There is no bad choice. Um, so again, I highly encourage you to apply to all the federal service academies, apply to ROTC, and then also look at us. So if you have any questions, you can always contact us. Um, that is our website and the different ways you can get in touch with us. For the Federal Service Academies, you wanna reach out right away. If you are a senior, you wanna get on that application tonight, okay? There are also um, field force representatives that will help you. For the Naval Academy, they're called Blue and Gold Officers. West Point calls them Field, field Force. Um, Air Force calls them ALOs. 
Um, those are actually alumni and dedicated volunteers that will help you through the application process. Again, it is a very supportive um, environment. We wanna help you through the application process and then while you're actually at the different academies or ROTC programs or state maritime academies. Um, we are a, a community that is looking to serve. Um, so all you need to do is reach out ask us any questions. Um, because of my background, I always help students, even if they're not looking at Maine Maritime. Um, you have questions, just let me know. For our California students, know that Maine Maritime's Acad Academy student body actually represents 26 states and five countries. We have a lot of students from the, the coast, so both East Coast and West Coast. Most of our students on the West Coast come from California, but Washington is, is quickly creeping up. So Washington has a lot of Coast Guard influence, Naval influence, and we have a lot of different shipping companies um, up there as well. Um, but we have a lot of alumni, the Port of Long Beach, um, San Francisco, um, that have done quite well for themselves. Um, so don't think of us as being too far. Yes, we are on the other side of, of the um, United States, but we do have a great group of California students here um, and we want more. So um, definitely look to uh, join that, that community of our students. So right now, that is all that I have. Um, oh, I will stop sharing. Um, and let's just see if you have any questions? You can type your questions in now. I hope that you found out all the information that you'd like about the different um, opportunities. Um, one of the things that I actually forgot to talk about were the, the National Guard. Um, that is also another opportunity. We have a lot of students here. You do not have to be actually from Maine to join the Maine Guard. One of our former, because um, she just graduated, women's soccer players um, from California actually joined the Maine Guard. Um, and so Seuss is in our Army Maine Guard. Um, and she was actually in our um, marine biology program. Um, so she's doing research right now um, with, the, with the Army. She does um, weekend drills, so one weekend a month. Um, and then she also um, now has accepted or she's in the process of accepting a commission. Um, so she's no longer going to be a reservist. Um, one of the great things about it is once she went into the main guard, they do have a tuition program. So she actually got her tuition paid for um, by the main guard. We also have the air guard here as well. That's another opportunity for those looking for more of an air force or a um, flight type opportunity. Um, everything from helicopters, Lakotas, Blackhawks, you name it. Um, and the Bangor National, the, they actually drill at um, the National Guard station at Bangor, which is only about 45 minutes away. I think oh, a question about athletics. Um, so West Point Naval Academy and Air Force Academy are division one. If you are interested in playing um, athletics or varsity athletics with them, I do encourage you to go on their athletics websites and fill out the recruitment questionnaire. Most of the times they are recruited athletes. Um, you know, they do have some walk on opportunities. Sometimes they do have JV teams as well. Um, but a lot of the students will participate, whether it be in varsity sports, um, and then there are intramural opportunities like I, I discussed. Um, they do have um, a lot of unique overlap. They're very competitive. Um, likewise, Coast Guard Academy, Kings Point, the Merchant Marine Academy, um, Maine Maritime, and some of the other state maritime academies all compete at the Division Three level. We also have some traditions embedded in um, friendly competition, as we like to call it. Um, so we do have things like the Maritime Cup um, for women's volleyball, where Mass Maritime, SUNY Maritime, Kings Point, and Maine Maritime all play, and it rotates campuses every year. Um, unfortunately, with COVID, we're probably not going to have that opportunity this year, um, but maybe in the spring. Our, our lacrosse programs do it as well. 
Um, for football, everyone knows about the big Army-Navy football game, but yes, they all play against each other. Um, and um, for Coast Guard and Merchant Marine Academy, they also have the Secretary's Cup where they compete against each other for football and then in total sports against each other. Um, for football, right now, we have suspended our football team um, you know, during this COVID time, um, and we're looking at reevaluating and reassessing um, how to bring it back safely or if to bring it back. Um, but usually, we do compete against Coast Guard, Merchant Marine Academy. Um, we compete against Mass and SUNY um, Maritime as well. Um, it's a pretty competitive football conference that we are in. So with that last question, I think I am almost out of time. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, and I hope you have all your questions answered. Thank you so much, Kelly. So thank you for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We very much appreciate uh, feedback that you can provide for us. Also, um, this was just one of the many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week or so, uh, this session will be um, available on the college to career fairs connect.org website. Thank you.